time we did a newsletter to all of your subscribers. And if, uh, by the way, if you're not subscribed yet, let's make sure you go to paulchalimo.com. You want to subscribe to his newsletter first and foremost. Uh, and we have promised something to your followers that I don't think I've ever seen in the industry. And that is a, a lap by lap ish recap of a, a race. And we're going to, today, we're going to do a recap of the Doha. Um, IAAF track and field championships that just went down a month ago. Yeah. So, uh, first off, I'd like to welcome everyone. We have Ariana here. She's a little bit, maybe a little bit more important than Paul. She's going to be joining us today. This is Paul's son, uh, sorry, daughter, Paul's daughter, Ariana. Um, 10 months. And uh, Paul, did she start walking today? Yeah. Um, man, she's kind of all over the place. Yeah. What, um, yeah. When did she actually start walking? Because I saw uh, I saw a video today of her walking. Was this today or was this like yesterday? When did she recently start walking without like holding on to something? That was yesterday. And now she even wants to walk, you know? That is crazy. Crazy, crazy. I know I didn't walk till after, I think, 13 months. So she's obviously following yeah. in her footsteps. Cool. I'm going to share my screen real quick. And we're uh, I have the... Um, Doha men's 5k final up. So it looks like we have a, there we go. so can you see my screen? Yeah. All right, cool. So standing on the line, obviously we can see you right here. Um, interesting. Like what is going through your mind in it right, right about now? And is it any different than like, uh, a diamond league race? Yeah, definitely. Uh, this uh, this does a lot of pressure. You know, it's a championship, and uh, I think I was built for the championship. So I mean, it's been uh, I was preparing for it. I mean, this mm -hmm. time I was just thinking about like just going for it and and give it all. You know, it's be it was a tough year. You know, yeah, yeah. Been down and um, I was just trying to give it my all. You know, so so at this point. At this point, I was just zoned into the race. Are you nervous? Are you nervous at all? I mean, I know there's people like that go into big matches at the highest level, and there's obviously nerves involved. But how nervous are you actually standing on this line right now? Yeah, I was, uh, I was, I was so nervous. Like, you know, like it's been this mm -hmm. is a race that I've been. Uh, and actually, all this year I've been nervous a lot of races because it's uh because the year just started like really tough and it's been uh, tough year because of and, your daughter because of your daughter yeah and to be honest it's there was a lot more pressure and yeah coming into the race I wasn't I wasn't the favorite so coming into the race uh, I wasn't the favorite to be top three and everything so I was gonna go and and do my best and try trial like it so that's why it, it wasn't it wasn't like it wasn't like london world championships whereby i was um, i had a good year and i was prepared okay and it's not like the olympics olympics i went to the olympics and i had nothing to lose so yeah that's a good point so you were underdog definitely in the uh, olympics but 2017 you were obviously not maybe a favorite, but you were definitely expected to be on the podium. And I don't think there was anyone not at kind of expecting you to at least race pretty well. Um, you had a great strong showing at pre-classic. Uh, you ran well throughout the year. You had some highs and you had some lows, but you definitely, um, you ran strong in the semifinals. And then of course, heading into this race, I don't think there weren't many people who thought you weren't going to be on the podium. So before I click start and we're going to like kind of give a recap throughout the race, what is your, what were your thoughts on the, the stadium in Doha in general? So obviously London super packed, it's filled to the, uh, to the top with individuals and the very packed house and then Doha, not so much, but uh, what did you think of Doha, the stadium? Yeah. Um, the stadium wasn't packed and um, I feel like to be honest, it was, to the advantage of the Ethiopians, okay. Because yeah, because they were, because they were, the stadium was like, one side was just Ethiopians, pure Ethiopians, and they were just cheering like so hard, you know. Yeah, I did see that from Haroon uh, Abda. He had posted a, a a pretty 
pretty cool photo. There's a very strong Ethiopian showing. I wonder if there, there's a lot of Ethiopians or more so um, in Doha than others. But uh, as far as the track, with nice track, nice stadium. Yeah, the track was good. The stadium was air conditioned. It was really nice, and it's it was a fast track. So I think it's uh, it's it it was a really good track, you know. So I I think I think the conditions were the conditions were good. It wasn't like that bad. So okay, well, cool. That's, yeah. perfect, that's a perfect place to start. Fast track. The gun's about to go off, or the gun's gone off, and one like. Okay, you can still see my computer. The gun goes off and it's quick, man. It is like super fast out of the gate. I think, there we go, we split. I'm pretty sure we split like 60 seconds. Nothing that you haven't done before, but it didn't really like slow down. So let's catch this 200 meters and then we'll get your intake. 29, about 29 seconds, 30 seconds through the 200. Is this something that you, you've seen before or you, what are you going through your mind right about now, sitting in second? Yeah. yeah, at this point, I was. I'm just gonna put myself in the best position and let uh, just go for it, just go for it all the way till the end. So at this point, Edris went to the front, and I was like, maybe they sacrificing Edris uh, okay. as they are to pace them, you know? Yeah. So one seconds. Yeah, quick. Yeah. So at this point. Uh, early in the race, I was like, I'm just gonna put myself in the best position, okay. and not stay with the, stay in the middle or stay way back where I can make moves. So I just wanted to stay close to the leaders and uh, and try do my best and and do whatever I can do. So, okay. So speaking on tactics, so you you talk about maybe they're sacrificing Idris. This is something that you see as more specifically in Eastern Africa tactics, whether it's Ethiopia or Kenya, where they sacrifice an individual to make it a, an honest race. It's not something we really do in the U.S., but in this case, um, did, was there any strategy? Do you ever talk with another athlete like Hassan is obviously in this, uh, this race, and Hassan does medal. Um, did you talk to... Mr. Mead at all any time before the race about tactics between the United States uh, in this race? Yeah, no. Uh, we talked about, like, we didn't talk about the tactics necessarily because we knew, like, the Ethiopians are going to come in with their tactics and we're going to try to do our best and match it. Mm -hmm. So at this point, you see us and Mead is close to the leaders because we agreed we're just going to go there and die and just go for it. So that was the main goal. and. There was nothing me and Hassan could do in this race. You know, we couldn't pace them, we couldn't do anything, but just, uh, just do it, just go for it till when it's time to strike. Okay, so 239 through a K. Are, is this pretty like, do you feel pretty good right about now at 239 or did you expect faster? Did you expect slower? Uh, you're still sitting on his heels, but uh, what's going through your mind after you come through a K at 239? And is that something that you kind of uh, expected? Yeah, I mean, at this point, I was feeling so good. Like, 239 was was good pace. I felt so relaxed. And uh, I remember this time I was telling Edris, push, push. I was telling him to push the pace. I was telling him to go faster, you know? Okay. And, and they kept switching and switching. And so we just went for it all the way, you know? Like, I kept doing my best and tried to put myself in the best position and tried to make it fast, as, my, as fast as I could, because I... I uh, I'm trying to to do more faster races, like at least run faster races than tactical races. Yep, yep. Because that's not gonna happen anymore. Like there is no more tactical races. Seems more left. Seems more far left. You know, like very true. There is nothing like tact anymore. Like tactical races. So I just have to go there and uh, and position myself and go for it all the way to the to the end. All right, so it's starting to break up a little, um, the two different packs. But before we come up on the mile here really soon, you said you, you were talking to Idris to, to pick it up. When obviously there's two different uh, countries that speak two different languages, in some circumstances, obviously, English may be like the universal language and you, say, you may say something. But in this case, did you, 
did you speak to him or do you like just tap on his back or like what exactly how do you mention like to not to keep going yeah like like at this point i was telling it i was telling uh Berega, faster faster you know and uh okay and, i paused it real quick so people could see the the first mile so 413 um first through 15 still tight 413 and we'll i'll come back to that so what what you, you you spoke to him you said faster faster yeah, I told him to go faster, and uh, and at this point, I was just like positioning myself and trying to do my best and 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 and, and bring the medal home. So yeah, I know you looked incredible right here. So four thirteen, uh, mile one. It would and Hassan's falling back. This is a a guy who who actually medaled. Um, what what were your thoughts on four thirteen? This is a pace that you can obviously do uh practically throughout the year um what were your thoughts on the 413 first mile uh 413 felt it felt relaxed you know at this point i was so relaxed and 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 i wasn't straining at this point i was just i was just trying to position myself all the way okay so here we are chilling second uh, right about now, do you still feel like, do you personally feel you, you're going to win this race? Or is, uh, it, or is it too undecided because it's so bunched up and you just never know? But do you feel personally pretty confident right now? There's seven laps to go. This is obviously where sometimes it, it starts to hurt. What are, you, uh, what are your thoughts right about now? You know, like at this point, everybody's the best. You know, like if it was a diff, it was other race, I would feel everybody's the best in this type of race. So, like if you, I go there and and I try to. At this point, nothing is given. You know, when you race, when you race a championship, mm -hmm. it goes all the way till the last, even the last twenty meters. That, that's the most important thing because it's like, like literally, like the last. The last, the last 200 meters can make a really big difference. You can come from first place to last place. Gotcha. Yeah, I actually misspoke and I said Hassan ended up meddling. And I meant to say Mo Ahmed was the uh, individual who ended up meddling. So, um, here, yeah, here we are coming up on, what was that? Still, okay, let's talk about the Inga Britain. Inga, I don't even know how to say the, the brothers from Norwegia. Uh, Nor Norway, sorry, the the Norwegian brothers. What um, do you think about competition at all, or do you are you just in like your own element? Do you actually study? You know, like in football, they do uh, they study the opponent. In basketball, like LeBron James studies his opponents. Do you kind of study your opponents and plan to attack them in a way they may be weak, or do you just run your own race? Ah, uh, it's. It's you know you have to go there and like you have to do a lot of studying you know like you have to really do a lot of studying and uh, when you go to a race you have to be planned and you have to know like what to do when to make a move and mm -hmm. so um, so for the Ingebrigtsen Britain brothers you know it's they do fifteen hundred meters and pretty much you know they got a lot of speed and yeah. and. Already, like at this, at the end of this race, you know, like I've taken like a lot of lessons. I know what to do next time. I know what, uh, what's the best thing to do. You know, like so. At this point, I was even feeling good. You know, I went on and took the lead, and I was like, let's yeah. just go all the way. You know, that's actually why I paused it. So let's go back. To, I'm gonna rewind it just a second. You were eight minutes into the race, and um, here we are. Here we are. So. We're coming around the bend, uh, 3K and 7.53, and you move up to the front. Was this because the uh, Bekele was slowing, or is this because you just felt good and wanted to press the pace? What exact? Why did you take the lead? Yeah, um, I just took the lead to to show them that I'm still there. You know, like it's it's gonna it's gonna go all the way through to the Till to the wire, you know. Okay. And I, and I didn't want the pace to slow down because of the Ingebrigtsen brothers. So when they coming to the front, you know, I was like, 
I'm just going to go there and try to control the pace and make it a bit faster so that it doesn't slow down. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, because obviously uh, Jacob, the uh, the younger individual, has a, a recently ran a pretty fast 1500. So how worried are you when there's like a lap to go or two laps to go and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. There's 10 people right here with one mile to go. Um, so that's a question. There's one mile to go in the race. There's 10 people. What's going through your head and the fact that do you feel like, okay, there's too many people here. I need to pick up the pace. Or do you feel like, eh, I'm just going to hold back and I'm pretty confident because you have a strong kick that I'm just going to let it uh, go down to uh, the kick. Yeah, I'm always pretty confident with my kick. And uh, when it goes, because at this point is, uh, there is, I mean, I have a good kick and I shouldn't be worried too much about like towards the end kicking. But, but um, I feel like I can, if the pace is faster, it's a better chance for me. You know, like it's way better for me if the pace is a bit faster. Absolutely. So I can, and I can kick better with the pace a bit faster. So, okay. So it looks like it's uh, it's really ramping up right now. Uh, we'll catch a 400 split. I think they're about to come up on three laps to go. It did not give us one. Um, but you can just visually tell the pace is picked up. With, yeah. Are you uh, are you worried at all right about now? Are, are you because you now you're 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 cut you're in fifth one you're sorry you're in sixth. Are you uh, and it looks like you're moving up here right about now. But uh, are you fatigued right now? Are you? Yeah. Tired? So, so at this point, I just didn't want to get boxed in, and and I knew there was a lot of people in the in the lead pack. So I just uh, said I just have to do my best and position myself, put myself in the best position in this race all the way till the end. You know. Okay. All right. So yeah. So. Yeah. Do you, yeah, like, so I, do you prefer do running the rail or do you like running right off the rail off someone's shoulder to run the least distance? Uh, but sometimes you run the rail, you get trapped. Or do you like running, uh, again, right off somebody's shoulder? Yeah, to be honest, it just depends on the race, on how the race plays, you know? Okay. Yeah, so I just try to... I just try to... When you feel like you're stronger than the other guys, you know, you can... Uh, you can run inside the rail because, you know, you can kick at any other pace, you know? Yeah. But uh, but uh, when it's kind of like a very tactical race and a, and a big championship, you know, every second, even three seconds or two seconds makes a big difference, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So, All right, I paused it. 59 second last lap. There's, a, there's 400 meters to go. You're sitting in second. Um, it, you're obviously you're obviously hurting. So let's talk. Let's change the gear real quick um, to the individuals. Most of your fans, your high school, your college kids. When the pain sets in, and it just you're uncomfortable and it really hurts. What exactly do you do or tell yourself to like mask the pain or how do you uh, how do you overcome all of the hurts to just like suck it up or and like prevent yourself from dropping you know the big thing is uh really really depends on the type first of all it depends on the type of training you do <laughs> if you train, because if you train and prepare for it even if you are really tough mentally and you're not prepared for it and you haven't trained for it it's so hard to break you know so Whatever we do before championships and everything, we put our body through a lot of stress and a lot of tough training. Yeah. So at this point, it's just to resist what type of pace they're going and and just hang on as much as you could, do your best. Because if you are, there's two things in your mind. Something tells you like keep fighting, and another thing tells you like oh you just maybe relax a bit. So those, when you try relax a bit, that's when the race is over. You know, that's a good point. Because once you get to the comfort zone, that's it. That's it for the race. The race <laughs> is over. So you have to take the pain all the way, all the way to the finish. Hell yeah. All right. So one lap to go. Uh, do you have a strategy in the back of your head? Are you thinking, um, 
for those who may who haven't seen this or who have seen it and know the result, do you coming into this race, do you plan on taking the lead with 400 to go or 300 to go or 200 to go? Um, because you're a strong kicker, what are, your, uh, what are you trying to do right now? Uh, I, the big goal right now is just to position myself and be at the best uh, place to be, like be the, the best position. Okay. Yeah, you're and, in a good position. Uh, and um, I was uh, I was feeling good. Like when we got to 400 meters to go, yeah, I was feeling really good. And uh, something was telling me like, "Hey, I think you can win this thing." You know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but um, 600 to go. So two. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm gonna pause it. Can you 600 to go. Are you saying 600 or 200? 600 to go. Or like 600 to go. And the Britson starts flipping Mohammed, and I'm um, the guy who's closer to him. Yeah. And to be honest, I think that's what really messed me up big time, because uh, you know when people do like when they start clipping, and then you have to reduce the pace, and you have to go faster and reduce the pace or anything. Yeah. That's what sets in lactic and stuff. So at this point, it's just like the pace kept like wiggling up and down, up and down, and yeah, yeah. Like, and really, really, like, I was feeling good all the way. I was feeling good, like, 400 to go. Yeah. I knew, I knew, like, there is no way I was going to go home without meddling. I, I, I felt the same, man. Because typically when you're in it with a lap to go, um, it's usually people aren't going around you. You're going around people. So, uh, and that's a, good, that's a good thing. So here we are with 200 to go. This is kind of where you start to fall unfortunately backwards i still right here i thought you still had a chance to medal because we've seen what you uh ariana's tired or she's hungry but we'll finish this up real quick so typically you're in a good space right here and um here we are this is about 400 meters to go 400 meters ago okay you know what i was thinking uh I was a lap early. 400 to go right here. All right, 50. So you want 59, 57, and now here we are, 200 to go. And you're fatiguing. Um, that, we'll, we'll, finish, we'll let the race finish out. One, two, three, four, five. Obviously, you probably think that you're, uh, you're, you're aware that you're not meddling. Um, what happened, man? What uh, what happened to the, the your famous kick that we all know you have? So, like, to be honest, like it's one day you're gonna feel good in a race, and one, another day you're gonna feel like yeah, like crap. You know, this yeah. uh, during the eats, you know, when I lost my shoes, I think I think that was the big factor that caused me to to lactic really hard because I feel like running the last 2k of a race without shoes, you know, the yeah. imbalance, everything. That's crazy that that happens. Like low key that, low key that, that really like uh, messed up my legs. Yeah. It messed up my legs low key. I didn't feel it. But then like when we came to the last, the last 400 meters, I was like, if this is how the race is going to go, I'm going to, I have to get, I, I'm going to get gold or silver in this race. Yep. 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 Then 300 to go, 300 to go, I'm like, wait, what is happening to my legs? What is going on, you know? Yeah. And then 200 to go, I'm like, I think this is it, man. Like, my, I just, like, 200 to go, literally, I hit the wall, like, completely. Uh, the last 200 meters, maybe I ran, like, 35 seconds or 40 seconds because I was, like, I was super lactic. Yeah. And I don't know, like, I clearly don't know what happened in that race, like. Yeah, because that's, but, uh, but uh, you know, like, it's, I've changed training this year. I changed my training. I adjusted my training this year. Yeah, let's because, talk about that real quick. You're, uh, yeah. you then head on over to Vienna. You're, uh, you're part of the, uh, the awesome sub two with Kipchoge and, and actually making history. What uh, do you do? You, uh, 
do you talk to Ely? Do you have any tips? What exactly was he just in focus on sub two or what's your relationship with Ely? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, uh, I, I'm not like really, I'm not so close to Elliot. Yeah. But, uh, that time he was like zoned in, like he was zoned out, zoned into the race, you know, like you wouldn't yeah. even meet him. We couldn't even shake hands and everything. And, yeah. and I, a lot of people caught, uh, people, a lot of people had a call from Doha because of weather change, because mm -hmm. Doha was, was, because Doha was like really hot and humid. Yeah. And when, when you come in, we, we came to Vienna and it was like 35 and 40, like 40 to 45 with, with a bit dry air, you know, I, I woke up the next day immediately. I had a cold and, uh, uh, and I tried as much as I could to stay away from Elliot because really I wouldn't, help, I wouldn't be helping him if, if I, if he gets the cold and, and really, really like that was the worst cold I've ever had in my life. Oh, like, wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. What, yeah, what, because were, what uh, distances did you have to run for uh, the race? I did, I know I did 18 to 20. Okay, three three kilometers to eight k, okay, and eighteen to twenty three. Okay, that's cool. So ten k. Um, yeah. Let's talk about two thousand twenty real quick, and then we'll let you go. I, I know your uh, your daughter's yelling yelling at you. What um, what's your uh, what's two thousand twenty look like? It's all that you just made your uh, debut announcement. Um, you're going to be at Camel City. Um, so you're going to be running indoor. Is there going to be any cross country, or is it strictly indoor? It's a big year. It's a big uh, Olympic year. So what's the uh, what's the thought, the plan? Yeah, um, Colorado Springs definitely it's 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 getting like really wild here. You know, it's it's started snowing already. Like we've had like I know, two, I know. It's been like uh, this is the second like snow snow period. Like it's it just snowed twice. You know? Yeah, you you gonna go home? You gonna go back to, to Kenya for some? So, so I'm gonna go to Kenya for about like a month and a half or so. Okay, good. Yeah, because it's 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 better like to strain in because I'm getting older and with the old age, you know, like yeah, yeah, not, not getting too old, but with the older I get, you know, the better like I know. Body. And I grew up in 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 I didn't grow up in snow. I grew up in seventy degrees all year round. So no, I just have to do I just have to do what uh what works best for me because. Last year, I didn't. I wasn't able to go to Kenya, and you saw what happened this year. The year was all messed up, you know. And um, so I just have to go back to the basic. Do whatever I've been doing every year. Yeah. Go to Kenya, like go to Kenya for for yeah. a month for the win. Because during this time, I think I've realized it's very critical for me. That's yeah. why I didn't do New York 5K. Yeah. Because this time is really critical for me because I need to get back to training as early as now. So I mean. Those guys, they can they can have fun and rest as much as I can, but I'm not gonna rest. You know, that's that's one thing I promised myself. After the race in Doha, as soon as I finished the race, I was like, I'm gonna come back next year and I'm not gonna rest. And uh, that was what I've been through. And after Ineos, I decided like I'm not gonna do any 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 winter races. I'm not gonna do New York 5K or anything, and just go back, just come back home and get back into training and build it for next year because 2020 is a big year and uh and uh we'll see how it goes uh i didn't do uh indoors this year mm -hmm. so maybe that's also part of the reasons why my legs gave up 200 meters to go because i didn't have a lot of speed resistance yeah per se but because what, the, the what, pace was up you was, didn't was, what year was the year that you won uh, both the 1500 and 3K? That was 2017, two years, I mean, 2018, two years ago. So, uh, okay. yeah. so I'm just going to go back and do and try to do the same thing and pretty much do whatever I did to run 127 that year. And so this year I have to do better than that and maybe be in a better shape. And yeah, that makes sense. And, so are you going to do uh, US indoors and then maybe world indoors? Yeah, definitely. I am more like, if I'm gonna like put my body through a lot of pressure, yeah, it's next year, and I have to really like really go for it. And ah, uh, that's awesome. And and to be honest, you know, it's just it's it's one way thing, you know, go hard or suffer the rest of your life. So 
If oh, yeah. I don't, if I don't medal in in in, in Tokyo, I'm gonna yeah. suffer, man. Like so, I really, really have to. I really, really have to do my best because my goal was to medal back to back. My yeah. goal was to medal Rio, London, Doha, Tokyo, and yeah. Eugene. You know, 2021. So, really, my really, I'm not. I'm, I was heartbroken. Yeah. Whatever happened in Doha. But I understand that was a tough year, and I'm just gonna go back and 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 do my do whatever I can do to to medal at, at Tokyo 2020. Oh man, we are well. I'm definitely hoping that. Obviously, um, really, uh, I don't see why you can't. You're incredibly talented. So as far as any other tweaks, will you your nutrition? Uh, the Olympic year is just different. Right? Unlike basketball and, and football, where it's like there's this, it's annual. You have the annual Super Bowl, the annual World Series. Like track and field, like the Olympic Games is like the thing. So, do you change anything else uh, on the 2020, unlike 2019, 18, 17? Do you make sure you get nine hours of sleep or do you make sure you get 10 hours of sleep? Do you make sure that you eat 3,000 calories or 4,000, 6,000 calories a day? How dialed in are you um <clears throat> really you have your own really, therapist right really it's yeah really it's rinse and rinse and repeat you know just train get back into it uh, recover train and then recover train recover yeah and just train more smarter like do everything the right way yeah and we'll see we'll see how it goes you know that's awesome. All right. Well, I'll let you get, we'll give a shout out to all your sponsors. Definitely uh, Nike um, for providing you a full-time job, amazing product. Um, X Endurance, where are, they, where are those guys at? X Endurance. Pretty sure. I, th I thought I saw you drinking some. Is it right there? Your uh, water bottle? Boom. Yeah. Uh, and of course, Artican. We don't have to do too much on that, but. Cool. What uh? What's sweet, man? What are you doing the rest of the week? Just training, 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 training. I'm back into it, so it's training. I told you they can rest, but I'm not gonna rest. So. Oh hell yeah! Cool. All right, Paul. Thank you so so much. Um, again, guys, if you haven't subscribed to his newsletter, you definitely want to go to paulchalimo.com uh, and subscribe. And he puts out a monthly newsletter, always talking about something new and. What an amazing opportunity to get a lap by lap recap of Doha World Championship. So, have a good week, man, and we'll uh, we'll be in touch. All right, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Paul.